Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video. And today we're going to do another edition of how to get into. Now, for those of you who are new to this video series, basically it's a beginner guide, an introduction of sorts on how to get into various video game series. Now, there's certain rules and regulations when it comes down to these beginner guides. For example, I can only recommend five games to you guys. No more, no less. This is more or less because it saves you time, it saves you money, and it's not too intimidating to get into a video game series when there's only five games being recommended to you. In addition to that, I will also be showing you the order in which to get into those video game series. What games to play first and what games to play later. Whether it's an evolution of the gameplay, the evolution of a story, or maybe just how the game progresses throughout its years. So, without saying anything else, what game series are we getting into today? Well, today I will show you how to get into the Trauma Center series. Now, for those of you that know nothing about Trauma Center, Trauma Center is basically a surgery simulator. Where you play as a doctor and perform surgeries. Now, I know doctor surgery simulators aren't high up on the list of various different games. Some people want to play adventure games or FPSs or RPGs before they play a doctor simulator. It almost sounds a little mm, gimmicky, for lack of a better term. And I don't blame you for being skeptical at first. See, I kind of jumped onto the Trauma Center series on a whim. I saw Under the Knife in the store and I said, you know what? I will pick it up. It's not expensive, and I want to try something new, and I'm always striving to try new things. So I picked it up, and Trauma Center has quickly become one of my favorite video game series of all time. It's definitely in the top 10. So, what exactly is Trauma Center? Well, like I said, Trauma Center has two various different functions to it, uh, two different game modes. One is that you do surgery simulators. You either use your Wii Remote or you use your stylus. Um, and you perform various different surgeries using the such. Um, for example, you, if you need to suture someone, you use the stylus and you suture them up. Or if you need to cut someone open, or if you need to inject medicine, it's various different functions with the Wii Remote. And you use stuff from defibrillators, to first aid, to bandaging people up, to intense brain surgeries. There's a lot of different things that you do in this. In addition to that, the second part to Trauma Center is is kind of a novelized drama. Uh, in addition to the actual surgeries you do, there's a story going on. Um, and most of the stories deal with some kind of virus or biohazard or terrorists using diseases and viruses to their advantage. And you have to play as one of various different doctors to solve these riddles, these mysteries, and to find cures to these various different diseases and problems. It's quite gripping and interesting. And you know the unique thing about Trauma Center is you think the voice acting or the story would be bad, but actually, despite how outrageous the story can be at times, it's always entertaining, it's always fun, it always has a sense of drama and urgency, and when voice acting is used, it's really good. So, without any further ado, let's jump into how to get into Trauma Center. Now, out of all the Trauma Center games you get, and I'm not going to go in order of release, I'm going to go into order of what games you should get, actually. I recommend picking up the first game in the series, first, ironically, which would be Trauma Center Under the Knife for the Nintendo DS. Now, Trauma Center does everything you need it to do to get you into Trauma Center. It shows you all the tools that you'll be using, all the various different operations that you'll be performing, or at least the basic operations, and it is the first story that introduces you to the Trauma Center universe, which is set about, I believe, in 2018 to 2025, between those years. I forget exactly. And you are introduced to the main protagonist in the Trauma Center series, Dr. Derek Stiles. Now, Dr. Stiles stars in three of the games, and he guess, uh, he makes cameos in the other two. And Dr. Stiles is a great character because not only is he a super-powered 
uh, surgeon who really believes that there is no uh, disease that is incurable. Every disease can be cured. But Dr. Siles is a relatable character. He has his faults. He has his ups and downs. And you grow with him. Now, in addition to that, the... Gameplay on Under the Knife is so tight and so well done that you will be challenging yourself while playing the game. The only disadvantage to Under the Knife is, one, there's no difficulty setting. So if you want to do an easier mission or if you want to challenge yourself with more heavier difficulties, you're not going to get that. It's a set difficulty. Sometimes it can be challenging. Sometimes it can be a little easy. Second, and this isn't a big thing, but the art style for Under the Night is completely different from all the other art styles. It's a little bit more cartoonish. As you'll see in a moment, the art style switches things up quite a bit. Um, because we're going to jump into the next game to pick up for Trauma Center. And that would be Trauma Center Under the Knife 2. Which is the DS sequel to Trauma Center. Uh, basically, what they did is any problems that were done in Trauma Center 1 was fixed here. There is a difficulty setting. The controls feel a lot more tight. Um, and the gameplay is drastically improved. There's a lot more challenging missions. And as I said, the art style becomes more akin to what will be the rest of the art style for the Trauma Center series. Uh, there's really no faults to this game. It is... Um, probably one of the best games in the series. The story may be a little weak at times, but for the most part, uh, this is a great game and a great sequel to the original Under the Knife. Now, Trauma Center is also not only known for their DS games, but also their Wii games. Um, and one of the Wii series that utilizes the Wii Remote excellently, if that's actually a word. I'm making a word now. Excellently. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so the first game you should get for the Wii games would be Trauma Center Second Opinion. Now, Trauma Center Second Opinion is a port of the original Trauma Center Under the Knife game. However, it is ported to the Wii, it has some extra missions on it, and it updates the graphic and art style of the characters. If I do a side-by-side -side comparison, uh, you see Dr. Styles in the middle there, and you compare him to in the middle there, uh, drastically different. Angie uh, Thompson, who is a nurse, is drastically different here. Uh, it's more akin to the art style, and although that's not a big thing, it does help out a lot. Uh, second opinion is a lot more challenging than the original because you do have that difficulty setting, and there's some really hard missions, especially towards the end. Um, and it also is your introduction to the Wii Remote as your main surgical tool. The only downside to Second Opinion is it takes you a little bit of time to get used to the Wii Remote because you're so used to the precision that comes with the stylus. Um, but after about maybe three chapters of the game, it'll feel like second nature. So Second Opinion is the next game to get in the Trauma Center series. It kind of does exactly what Under the Knife did. It introduces you to the world of Trauma Center, however, with the Wii and with a familiar Trauma Center story. The next game to get for Trauma Center would be Trauma Center New Blood. Again, kind of a natural evolution of Trauma Center. You don't play as Dr. Styles this time. See, for the first three games, you played as Dr. Styles. Now, although he makes a cameo in this, instead you play as Dr. Blaylock and Dr. Vaughn. Um, and the unique thing about this Trauma Center game and the evolution of the gameplay is you get co-op. You can do surgeries on the Wii Network or with a friend and compete with each other or against each other, um, which is an interesting new gameplay that gets added to it. Uh, the story is different, the story is new, and there's various different kind of viruses and diseases that you have to take with. So again, it's a natural evolution of the Trauma Center series. Trauma Center, New Blood. And the last of the Trauma Center games that you should pick up would be Trauma Team. Uh, which is actually probably the most dramatically different of the Trauma Center series. Uh, well, there are some recurring characters like Dr. Naomi uh, Weaver, who's actually changes her name to Dr. Naomi Kimishima, and there's a reason story-wise why you do it. Uh, this is a completely new cast of characters, and the thing that makes this stand out the most is you play as six doctors who have different professions, from orthopedics to surgery to first response to forensic to diagnosis to endoplasties 
uh, it's really just a completely different gameplay experience because you get to play as several different professions. Uh, you could be diagnosing people, you could be looking at dead bodies, you can be doing first aid, you can do normal surgery, you can even be fixing people with bones. You have various different missions in this. Uh, the only disadvantage in Trauma Team, although it's probably the most diverse of the games, the only two uh, uh, disadvantages is, one, it's the easiest of the games. Uh, although it's probably the longest, it is the easiest. You you will have no trouble with this. The end missions, um, they don't have the challenge level that the did in the other games. Uh, the second thing is you get... So, let's say five or six chapters with each character in their own profession, and then a 13 chapter finale. But I don't feel as though you get enough time with each character in their specific chapter and doing what they do. Um, my partic uh, particular favorite chapters in this is actually Forensic and the Diagnosis. Those are the most fun. Um, however, Surgery I just was whipping through because I'm like a master surgeon now. But Trauma Team is the last game to pick up for the Trauma Center series. And that is basically how to get into Trauma Center. And I really implore people to go out and do so because Trauma Center is a gem. It really is a completely different kind of game series to everything else. And I think it's one of the best games on the Wii, and I dare say it's some of the best games on the DS. And you know what the great thing about Trauma Center is? Other than the fact that they're great games, but they're easy to get your hands on, and they're very inexpensive. Uh, Under the Knife, I got for 4 bucks at GameStop. Uh, second Opinion, I got for $10. I think the most I paid was for Trauma Team at 17 bucks For a video game, that's fairly cheap. I don't think I spent any more than that. And on a whole, I don't think I spent any more than 50 bucks for the whole series. Which is, again, really good if you want to try something new if you want to try something daring and you want something really fun and most importantly something really challenging the trauma center games are where you should go so i highly recommend you pick up the trauma center series and pick them up soon that said um if there's any video games you want me to do a video game series on how to get into if there's a game series you want to get into but you're curious about and you know nothing about let me know Post a comment down below. Uh, there are some game series that I plan to do fairly soon. But if someone asks, hey, Andrew, I want to know how to get into Resident Evil. Or, hey, Andrew, can you tell me how to get into, oh, I don't know, Samurai Showdown. Or how to get into Dead Space. Although Dead Space doesn't qualify because it only has three games. But um, how to get into Mario Kart. I don't know. Ask. And I will do the best I can to help you out. With that said, I'm going to end this video here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.